This is lesson 1.1, and when we get done with this lesson, you're going to be able to name and sketch geometric figures. There are several vocabulary terms that are important for you to understand, and I would like you to spend the time to fill in all of the vocabulary words on your note sheet. Go ahead and pause the video. As you're writing in the information, please make sure that you're processing each one of these definitions rather than just filling in the information. Geometry is a course that we are going to need to understand a lot of new vocabulary and we are going to be speaking almost a whole new language in this class so understanding what a point is is very important as well as a line as well as a plane as well as collinear points. The collinear points are the ones that lie on the same line so perhaps we have a line Lines always have arrows on the end of them. Both ends have arrows. And collinear points are those that are going to be all on the same exact line. So we could have as many points um, you know, on that line. Basically a line is made up of a lot of points, infinite number of points. Collinear points lie on that same line. Coplanar points are going to lie in the same plane. So when we get to the diagram at the center section of your page there, I'm going to uh, discuss some coplanar points. Line AB, notice the way that it's written. We're going to learn some new notation as well. So the notation has an arrow head on both ends there above the capital A and the capital B. The points A and B are capital, so when we write points we need to use one single capital letter to name a point. A line segment, or sometimes we just refer to that as segment, is written like this capital A, capital B, and it ends at A and ends at B, therefore there is no arrow on the end. Um, but it does consist of those two endpoints. The ray AB, written like this, with just one headed arrow, consists of the endpoints and all points on line AB that lie on the same side of A as B. So if we were going to talk about this, it would be, if this was A, um, we're talking about all the points along this line on the same side of B, and I'm sorry, the same side of A as B. If point C lies on line AB, now when we're reading these sentences, we should be referring to this as line AB. So if point C lies on line AB between A and B, then ray, remember this is a ray, CA and ray CB are opposite rays. So let's go ahead and draw that diagram. If we have a line called AB, here's a capital A, here's a capital B, and C, it's telling us that point C lies somewhere between it. It doesn't have to be right in the middle, but it's somewhere right between A and B, and that means the ray that's starting at C going toward A and the ray that's starting at C going toward B are considered opposite rays. The word intersection just means that they are, there are two or more geometric figures that have one or more points in common. I'm going to suggest right now that if you have any questions at all about any of these vocabulary terms, if something is unclear, Go ahead and put a little symbol next to the one that seems unclear to you or one that you need a little bit more instruction on once you get to class. So you could put a star, you could put a little question mark next to it, um, you could even write a little question to yourself on the edge of your paper to ask in class, but it is important that you understand these terms. So if you're unclear about anything, make sure at the beginning of class you get that question asked. We're going to take a look at example number one. The diagram that we have over at the right has so many different letters, lines, um, then there have, we have the parallelogram which represents the plane itself. So we want to go through this diagram a little bit and kind of mark it up. Let's start with the lowercase letters that we see here. We see a lowercase m and a lowercase n those two lowercase letters indicate the name of the line. This line here is line N, this line here is line M. And then we see uh, several capital letters. The capital letters with the dots 
are considered coplanar points. So point B, point D, point E, and point C all lie on the plane, and they are considered coplanar because they all lie on the same plane. The name of the plane here is plane A. How do I know that it's plane A? Well, plane A um, doesn't have, actually the, the letter A doesn't have a dot next to it. So that's the one that we use to name the plane. Another way that we can name a plane is with three capital letters. So naming a plane can be done with three capital letters as well. So for this example, we could call this plane B, D, C, because B, D, and C, points B, D, and C, also lie on the plane. Just want to indicate that this is a line and lowercase letter n is a line as well. You might notice that line M looks like it's sticking out of the plane, and you are correct. The line M is piercing through the plane A at point E. So point E is an intersection point of line M and the plane called plane A. It's also an intersection of lines N, this line N, and line M. So E is the intersection point. It's where those points, those lines come together and share a point in common. So that's what we would call a point of intersection. Let's take a look at part A in our example. Part A says to give two other names for line EF. Remember, this is a line because it has the symbol over top of it. So we want to read that as line EF. Well, if I'm looking at the diagram that I have all marked up here, here's F and here's E. So really we're talking about this line right here. Okay, and when we're talking about that line, we can just reverse the two letters and we can call it FE. That's one name for that same line. And then we can also call it by its lowercase letter that's indicated here, which is just line M. Give another name for plane A. We've done that. Okay, that's BDC. It's got to have three capital letters and it has to have the names of the letters that are on the plane. Remember, plane A doesn't have a dot next to it, so that capital letter is not indicating that it's a point. F is not on the plane, so we cannot use F as part of our naming of plane A. So we could call it EDB. We could call it E, B, C. We can't use F and we can't use A. Part B says name three points that are collinear. Collinear. If you remember that, if you can't remember it, do you see the word line in there? The word line just means that all of the points are going to lie on the same line. Well, if you look at the diagram, I know it's all marked up here, but maybe on your paper, you can tell that point C point E and point D all lie on line N. So these are collinear points. They all have to be on the same line. Four points that are coplanar. Do we have four points that are coplanar? First we need to remember which word we're talking about. We're talking about coplanar and coplanar indicates that all of the points lie on the same plane. So in this case, we want to pick four points that are on the same plane. Okay, the plane that we're talking about is plane A. This whole area here is the plane. Well, we don't want to talk about F. Point F is not on the plane because it's kind of up in the air. And A, remember, is not a point. So the other three, sorry, the other four points on the plane, B, D, E, and C all lie within the plane. They're lying and they're planted right on that plane. Now part C says give another name for segment EF. The line, the partial line, no arrows on it, means that we're talking about a segment. The only other name that we could give that is FE. And remember, I'm, I will be looking for the proper notation. So notation means that you have the line over the two capital letters. Part D, name a ray with endpoint E that is an opposite ray of EC. So hopefully your diagram isn't quite as marked up, but we're looking for a ray with endpoint E. So we definitely have to start at E. 
and it has to go the opposite direction of the ray called EC. So if I look at my diagram and I'm going to start at E right here and I have to go the direction towards C. That's that ray there, but I need to go the opposite direction. So I need to head off toward this end of the line and it looks like that's going to be ray ED. I'd like you to do this on your own portion by taking a look at the diagram and making sure that you can give two other names for the line CD, give another name for segment CE, name ray with endpoint F, and continue on with numbers 4, 5, and 6. This should be something that you do. Go ahead and stop the video, take a moment to test and see if you can actually do these practice problems on your own. On the back of your note sheet, we have example number two. Example number two is going to ask us to sketch some intersections of lines and planes. So the first one says sketch a plane and a line that is in the plane. Well, if we're going to sketch a plane, that's just going to be the shape that we saw on the other side, which is going to be a parallelogram. Doesn't have to be perfect, but something close. We also want to name that plane, so I'm just going to put a letter in here. I'm going to name my plane Plane P, capital P. And then I also have to draw a line in the plane. Well, a line we know has two points, at least two points, and it has arrows on the end. So now I'm just going to name the points that I put on here. And in this case, you can name them whatever you'd like, but they do need to be capital letters. I'm going to place line XY in plane P. Next, I have to sketch a plane. So again, I'm going to sketch a parallelogram. I'm going to give it a name. And I also have to sketch a line that does not intersect the plane. So it's got to be uh, two separate drawings, basically. So I'm going to make my plane. I'm going to name it. This time I'm going to name it plane W. Just a letter in the corner is how we name the plane. We don't need a dot next to it because it's not naming a point. And then I'm going to draw a line that does not intersect the plane. And I'm going to happen to name mine GO. So a line GO, again, when you're drawing your line, make sure that you have arrows on the end and that you have the two points with capital letters to be named that way. Next up, we have to sketch a plane and a line that intersects the plane at one point. Well, if you take a look at the picture on the other side of your page, that is exactly what they had in line M. Line M was intersecting uh, plane A at just one point. So to draw this one, it does take a little bit of artistic skill, but if you watch carefully, I bet you can get this done. Let's go ahead and name our plane F. And the line is going to be kind of piercing through the plane, if you can imagine a pencil. Um, kind of jabbing through a piece of paper. So I'm going to make my first point, point B. That's the point where this line is going to come through this plane. And now I'm going to name a point out here, point A, and I'm going to hyphenate my line so that it is kind of looking like it's disappearing behind the piece of paper or the plane. So go ahead and put a dash portion of your line and now we see that that line AB is intersecting plane F at just one point. Point A is not on the plane, but point B is. This last sketch of the intersections is a little bit challenging because they're asking us to sketch two planes that intersect in a line. So in this one, pay attention real carefully because it's going to be a little bit hard. First of all, start off with drawing a plane just like we have in the past and let's go ahead and name this one plane C and then I'd like you to find a midpoint on this side of the plane and find a midpoint on this side of the plane midpoint just means the point in the middle and then I would like you to draw a line straight up across and down to that other point so basically you should have sort of a volleyball net um, appearance on your page right now. If you have to stop the video and maybe rewind the video a little bit to go ahead and do that, 
and then I need you to dash, put little dash lines there, and continue down, go over to the right, and then connect up. So now we have two planes. Um, the last part of this is going to be to connect the two dots and then make arrows on the end because that is the line in which those two planes are intersecting. So the red line that I'm going to name L, and this is a cursive letter L, I forgot to name my second plane, so I'm going to name it capital W up here. So W is the square plane, but if we looked at it a different way, it could look as if it was sort of slanted in like uh, plane C. But now we have two planes, and if you um, can't see it quite well enough, I could shade in the plane here. Um, this is plane W that is intersecting with plane C. I'm not sure that gives you the right perspective, but from the side, um, if you were looking straight at it from this direction, it would be a plus sign like this, two pieces of paper intersecting, you could imagine. To wrap up your notes, I'd like you to try the on your own problems here. I want you to practice sketching some figures. You can feel free to name your lines and planes, whatever you'd like to. Um, just make sure that when you're drawing, you're neat and you put the correct symbols, you label things appropriately. And again, if you had any questions whatsoever, um, just, you know, the space down at the bottom of the page, you could just write some questions that you have that you want to make sure that you ask when you get to class. And I will be happy to answer those. Please make sure that you do finish the on your own problems, both on the front and on the back. I'll see you in class.